Hi there, my name is Keith Swain and one of the questions that I guess get asked uh, fairly frequently is how many languages I speak. Uh, most recently there was a reporter from Global Television here in Canada who is uh, preparing a documentary on hyperpolyglots. And hyperpolyglots, one of the definitions of a hyperpolyglot is a person who speaks six or more languages. So this uh, lady contacted me and asked me how many languages I speak. Uh, this also happens to me when I'm in uh, a restaurant, for example. I was in a Mexican restaurant with a French-speaking friend, and I was speaking French with her, and then I was ordering food in Spanish and talking with the servers in Spanish, and of course they knew that I could speak English, so they asked, you know, how many languages do you speak? I don't find that such a simple question to answer. In fact, uh, when I do, uh, I always feel like the person who's asking me is looking for a, a number. You know, how many do you speak? And I should say six or five or twelve or whatever it's going to be. I, I don't find it that straightforward. In fact, uh, I don't even think it's the right question. Um, so I, I end up sounding evasive. It sounds like I'm trying to avoid answering or, or giving a straightforward answer, and I'm not. I just don't think that giving a number like that is is meaningful. So uh, let me explain a little bit. I think that uh, when you ask somebody, do you speak French, for example, uh, the real question that should be asked is how much French do you speak? So we need to think in terms of proficiency scales. At what level do you speak French? You know, you can pull a book off the shelf and learn a few phrases and use them in, in predictable situations and use them with some accuracy. And uh, that is one level of speaking French. Then there's the ability to take uh, pieces of the French language and new vocabulary and combine it and uh, make uh, new sentences and get involved in conversations that were not uh, simply uh, repeating or parroting things that you'd heard before, that's another level of proficiency. And then there's a level of proficiency where you can talk about the present and the past and the future and and uh, start to express your opinions. That's yet another level of proficiency. And a person at every level of proficiency in the French language could say that they speak French. So when someone asks me how many languages I speak, I, I'm always thinking of well, at what proficiency level are you looking for? So, for example, uh, one of the things I did this past summer is I, I decided I was going to learn how to order my coffee in Starbucks in every language that I ran into. And I can do it. I can do it in a lot of different languages. I can order coffee in Tagalog, the, the language of the Philippines. Um, and uh, But am I, a, am I a speaker of Tagalog? I, you know, at, at, at a certain level, sure. I'm a, a novice level user, low novice level, user of Tagalog. But I can pronounce things fairly well, so often I'll say something in, in, in Tagalog and then people will say, have you been to my country or why do you speak my language? And, you know, I've used up about half of my Tagalog by the time the conversation's over, but it, it kind of works. Um, then when I'm speaking another language like Spanish, for example, uh, again, recently I was in Starbucks and I was talking with a barista who had been in Canada for just a couple of months and uh, he asked me which country I was from because my Spanish was really rocking that day and uh, my accent's good in Spanish and my but my proficiency level is so much higher it's a completely different thing so when I say I speak Tagalog and speak Spanish I guess both things are true but the real question is how much Spanish do you speak what proficiency level is your Spanish at um, on my website, there's a scale, a proficiency scale that allows you to uh, read descriptions of what a person can do at various proficiency levels. And that's far more meaningful. So I can say that my proficiency level in Spanish is, is, is quite high. My proficiency level in French is a bit lower. My proficiency level in Brazilian Portuguese is somewhat lower than that. My German is somewhere lower than that. And then there are other languages that are not spoken languages. So some hyperpolyglots will count things like Latin or Sanskrit or some classical language. I can read the Bible in the, uh, the, the New Testament in the original Greek. And so that's one of my languages. I can speak Esperanto, but uh, don't get so much opportunity to do that. So uh, I speak a bunch of languages, that, you know, phrases... Uh, greeting level proficiency, probably 50 languages. 
but uh, above that it's a much more limited uh, much more limited number so one of the things I'll often say is I could have this conversation in X number of languages depending on the conversation that I'm in if I'm talking about um, uh, a variety of topics in Spanish I've got a much wider variety of themes that I can talk about than I can in German for example and that's another factor in language proficiency often what happens is you have thematic proficiency I, I can talk about my business and my family in many languages but if I want to start talking about uh, politics or computers there's a smaller number of languages that I can do that in and that reflects this this issue of, of proficiency so I hope that's helpful, and I hope that will explain to my friends why it seems like I'm not giving a straightforward answer, but that's the truth. That's what language learning is really like. It's all over the map, and, and when people say they speak 12 languages and 20 languages and whatever, that's not really a useful uh, comment. Or if they say they speak fluently, what does fluently mean? I mean, you've got to define some of these terms. But uh, that's my answer. If, if somebody gives me enough chance to explain how many languages I speak. This is my, uh, this is my standard response. I hope that's helpful.